For the following exercises, use function composition to verify that f of x and g of x are inverse functions. So first of all, you got to know what you're looking for in order to figure out whether they are inverse functions of one another. So I'm just going to give this to you. Uh, anytime you have something like this, f of let's say the inverse function of f of x minus 1, anytime this thing is equal to just x, you know that these two functions, f and then the inverse, is going to be inverses of one another. I mean, that's basically what I'm saying, right? So is it what I'm saying? I don't even know. Let me say that again. Let me do it a different way. f of g of x, if that equals x, then I know that this function here is the inverse of this function. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And this is a composition of functions now. So what I have to do is I have to do compositions of functions on this thing and see what the result is, okay? So let's find f of g of x. Okay, start with the outermost function and then work your way in. So write down your f function. So f of x is equal to then cube root of x minus 1. All right. And now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take my g of x function, because remember, this is really like saying, let me move this down a little bit. This is really like saying f of x. All right. And everywhere you have your x, you're going to now plug in your g of x. Okay. So everywhere I have an x now, I'm going to plug in my g of x function. Okay. So it looks like this now. f of x is equal to the cube root of x cubed, oops, x cubed minus 1. This whole thing, excuse, oh, 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 plus 1. Careful, careful. x cubed plus 1. This whole thing in blue represented this whole thing in blue. All right. Don't forget to cube that, right? Because that's, oh, no, I already, I already have the cube in there. All right. And then now what you have is you have then minus one, right? So all I did was I took this piece and I simply plugged it in for this X. So that's what I have there. Okay. And then it's just minus one. So now if I get rid of those parentheses, because I really don't need them, I realize that I have F of X is equal to now the cube root of X cubed plus one minus one. Well, wait a minute. What happens to a plus one and minus one? Well, that goes bye-bye right? That goes bye-bye. So just erase it. They cancel. So now wait a minute. The cube root of x cubed, what is that equal to? Well, the cube root of a cube is simply itself, x. And look, we just proved it, okay? We got this result, and that's what I was saying before, that if I can take this composition of functions and it becomes, it's just an x at the end, that I know that they are inverse functions, okay? So they are inverse functions of one another. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run through this example, do the same thing. All right. So let's do f of g of x. So first start by writing your f of x function out. So we're going to write f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our g of x function, which is this thing, and we're going to plug it in for our x. So watch. So we have f of x is equal to now negative 3. And then we're going to write x minus 5 over negative 3 plus 5. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. Notice how we have a double negative here. So they go bye-bye and they're th and it's both 3, right? So they just cancel. So the negatives cancel and the 3 cancels. So now I'm left with just f of x is equal to x minus 5 plus 5. Wait a minute. Look at that. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll see you later. And here we get x. All right, that just proves it. So... That's it, guys. All right. I appreciate uh, you watching. Thank you so much. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.